I certainly wasn't thinking we'd be in a situation where there's discussion, earnest discussion about if we don't have testing, we, we can't return students. I will not put at risk the public health of our students, the public health of our um, faculty and staff, or our region by bringing home 3,000 students who might have contracted the virus if we can't test and verify them. As more and more colleges around the country went online, it seemed inevitable that Keene was going to do the same thing. So I think it can be done effectively, but for classes that have to do more hands-on work or require programs that students don't have access to, I don't know how they're going to do those online. For the foreseeable future, moving into even the next academic year, I need us to have other means by which we can create the Keene State experience for our students and, and experiences of connectivity for our faculty, staff, and students um, so that there's a shared sense of community, even if it's from our homes. And we've got to figure out how to do that if we hope to be an educational institution of quality. And we will. They're not happy to be leaving campus. I think they're experiencing a kind of normlessness. The familiarity that they had been nurturing over these past months as college students on campus, looking forward to graduation, looking forward to their productions and their, their shows and their presentations and their courses, they need to process it. It's not even just the, about the classes, you know, it's about the community that we have and now the experiences that I don't get to have anymore. That sucks. Like this is a time for us to be celebrating, hang out with our friends, finishing up our schoolwork, making the most of it, and then it kind of feels to me like it was just stripped away from us. We had our last class together without really even knowing it, so we didn't get a chance to say goodbye to each other and be like, this is our last class, and hug or take a group photo or anything. This is for many of those students their senior year, the spring of their senior year, uh, looking forward to commencement. These times are meaningful, you know, and, and so for the students who are on campus now, particularly those seniors for whom this these last few weeks are going to be different than they had envisioned. I feel a, a good deal of empathy for them that they're not going to have the experience that they had anticipated, the memories that they would have wanted. As we start to think about how we're going to continue to help students learn at home or from home, there's so many considerations. Most of my students tell me that they have an internet connection, um, but some of them are using their data. Uh, some of them will only have access through their phone. Uh, some of them are living with large families who are also going to be putting stress on that technology. So there are many unknowns and I think we're all going to need to be flexible and understanding and we're going to have to work on very positive communication techniques in order to get through some of these challenges. We're dealing with a new normal in terms of what education is going to look like for the next few months. We've got teachers who are going to teach online for the first time. At Keene State College, we had professors who'd never logged into our online learning system until recently. This is a massive shift for them to suddenly be dealing with. They're adopting a bunch of new technology we don't know how to use, and we're trying to do it right the first time. And that's, that's scary. We've operated in a different model than, than most traditional institutions have. Virtually all of our instruction is online. We've got multiple locations and we're always working via technology with, with each other as well as with our students. There are some basics and most faculty will master those. And then there are some things that will make you a better, uh, more engaging, more effective instructor online. And we hope that over time when people get past uh, the initial uh, transition period that they find the opportunity to, to take advantage of best practices that have been developed particularly by institutions like Grand State College where this is our core work. It makes me feel very unmotivated to want to continue my work because I'm not used to having online classes. It's going to be difficult to just like meet up as like a whole class online and stay on the same page and have everyone not go crazy and being like, what's going on? What do we do? As much as everything is moving online, that made me realize how important that physical connection is. Being in person, there's something about it that you can't really describe that is lost being online. What's challenging about this pandemic is we have to maintain our physical distance and so it's really producing a lot of dissonance in our minds. I have grave concerns about mental health and well-being for populations to be isolated from their social networks. So just as important as protecting public health 
I want our community talking about how we create different social structures for our students, ways to form community engagement, because isolation in and of itself at a time of this type of information and anxiety is presenting a whole different slate of concerns for me about the health and well-being of our public and specifically our students, faculty and staff. The really important thing as you are finding ways to connect with others is that you need to find ways to connect with others that is around an activity, a thing that you're doing together, because otherwise you call somebody and you talk about coronavirus and you have a meeting with friends and you talk about coronavirus and it's just taking up your entire life. You can play games together online, you can have movie night together online. You need to play a game, you need to read a book, you need to listen to music together. You need to do things together that are not virus-centered <laughs> so that you have other reasons to talk to people and other reasons to be engaged with them. We want to continue to care about other people and connect with them and check in on them and whether it's, you know, waving to the mail carrier or um, going for a walk at arm's length um, or making an exercise video and posting it or creating uh, ways for people to visit a museum virtually. So all these ways are really about continuing the social but uh, limiting the physical. I think that this is a pandemic and a crisis that many of us have not lived through in our lifetime. And I would just say that everyone should do their part and be kind to one another.